是 Maggie 老师，多伦多的独立升学顾问。今天呢，我非常荣幸的邀请到了 Apple B College 前任八年的招生主官 Mr. Matt Sheridan Jonah。他呢，现在呢是校友关系部的一个新任的负责人。那么我呢，今天呢，很荣幸的请到了他来跟我一起录制这个视频，跟大家解答一些。关于非盈利性学校捐款传统的一些敏感的话题，也希望这一期的这个录制可以给大家，尤其是加拿大多伦多的新移民华人家庭和已经在读的华人家庭，在捐款、校园捐款这个敏感的话题上，有一些新的思考、新的理解，避免一些误区。那么，我们首先请 Mr. Sheridan Joner 来介绍一下他自己。Um, so I'm Matthew Sheridan Jonah, and I'm currently the director of development for Appleby College. Prior to that, I was the executive director of admissions for eight years at Appleby College. Prior to that, I was the associate director for admissions and recruitment at Mount Allison University, which is a small liberal arts university on the east coast of Canada, and has been ranked as the best small university. Country for for many years, so I have almost twenty years of experience working in schools,、uh, primarily doing admissions, and now most recently doing、uh, development, which means fundraising, working with parents, working with families,、uh, and I I really love the the job, so I'm I'm happy to be here and talk to you today. Okay, uh, Mr. Sheridan Jonah, uh, 在从去年一直到前面的八年。都是 Apple B College 的招生主官。今年呢，他新担任了 Apple B College 的呃学校发展部的主任，主要呢就是负责呃一些捐款家庭的关系管理和学校的这个非盈利性的这个捐款的一些工作。那么今天非常荣幸的，请他将招生部的之前的工作经验和对于非盈利性学校顶尖私校 Apple B College。的这个非盈的捐款传承，从这个两个不同的角度来给大家解答一些非常敏感的话题。Okay, Matt. So we'll start from the first question.、Perfect. The first question is: um, um, in China, we do not have nonprofit private schools. So all the schools that parents need to pay tuition are virtually private, privately owned. So parents used to think, if if they pay the tuition, they are the big boss. So some of the parents will say, "Oh, I pay the tuition, so whatever request, whatever you know,、uh, problem I have, the teachers and the principals at the private schools should be responsible for solving the problem." And、uh, when those Um, immigrant families and、uh, you know international families come to Canada. So nonprofit is really a new idea for them. They do not know how to like regulate the relationship between the family and the school, and、uh, they don't know how to approach the teachers when they have problems. Okay, great, excellent question. Thank you.、Um, so I would say that most of the best schools. For、uh, boarding schools, high schools, and universities in North America are independent schools.、Mm -hmm. So, if you think of somewhere like Harvard or the University of Toronto or Appleby or other great Canadian schools,、uh, we are all independent schools. And the independence is very important because it means we run not as much as a business, but more in the best interests of education and the best interests of, of the students. So, it's as you said. There's a relationship between the parents and the students and the school, and we're always trying to develop that relationship and work together, because our goals are the same as your goals. We want to make your children successful. The more successful that they are, the better it looks for us as a school, and the better、um, they do in their lives, and the happier you are as parents. So, the goal should always be to work together. Because that is how we will make the best students. When you take good students, good teachers, good schools, good parents, and you work together, the best things will will come from it. So it is a different mindset、um, than a 
business because we're not a pure business. We need to use our money well, we need to, to not waste money, of, of course, uh, but our goal is always trying to make the school better so that we can make better students. And that is the long-term vision. It's not that no one owns the school. There is an independent board of directors which helps to set the vision for the school, but they are volunteers. Um, they make sure the principal is doing a good job, but they don't own the school. Um, so everybody that works at the school will be receiving a salary from working, but nobody benefits from the school making money. So any money that the school, if they were to, to have a profit, it goes back into the school to build new buildings and to improve the school. Okay, thank you so much. So Mr. Sheridan Jonah said very, very clearly, that in the world, the best schools are called public schools, like Harvard School, Yale 整个学校有一个独立的董事会而董事会的成员都是义工能够非常好的去帮助学生去成功帮助学生去和家庭建立良好的关系非常非常清楚的用于学校的所有的基建设施的改进以及用于维护整个学校包括学生和教工的一些基本的学习条件和工作条件也就是说没有人可以从家长的捐款当中去获取任何私人利益所有的钱都是非常透明公开的用于一个
For some families, they will make a very big donation and millions of dollars. For other families, it might be $2,000 or $20,000. To us, we're trying to build a community and we want everybody helping, everybody making Apple be better because that is, is how you get to be a better institution. Uh, in the same way that Harvard was at one time, long ago, just a regular school that was not famous. But generations of parents and students and teachers did their best and helped, and it became better and better and just keeps getting better. We are the same way. We want generations of, of support to keep getting better, and that support can be through time, or it can be through donations, or a mixture of both. Uh, but the most important thing is that it is a relationship, it, it is a community, and we all want to work together for the students of today and the students of the future. Thank you. That's a wonderful answer. 好的,那么刚才呢,我第二个问题呢,是问了Matt,就是像Apple Bee College这样的独立顶尖私校,是期待家长们有怎样的对学校的一个贡献,能不能请他给一些具体的建议。那么刚才Matt讲了 拥有最高的教育资源，能够培养出这么多杰出的人才，这个不是一代人、两代人努力的结果，而是很多代人努力的结果。那么在这么很多代人当中，尤其是这些过往学生的家庭，他们秉承着前人载述、后人乘凉的
I guess we we are always trying to do good things with the donations and change the lives of students, your own student, but also the community of students with you. So the, the most important thing, I, I think, is for families to know that for Appleby, we will use those resources, that those gifts, very, very well, and it will help generations of students. So you should feel good about wanting to support a school. You shouldn't feel like, oh, I have to do this and I don't want to. It should be because you want to make the school a better place. You want to help other students. You want to, it, it should make you feel good. So ideally, uh, we want the families to feel comfortable about their gift. And it should not be so much that they, they can't you know, go on vacations or they can't buy the things that they want for their, their family or to support their grandparents or those types of things. But we also want the families to, to think seriously about what can I afford? So maybe I will buy you know, one less fancy thing and do more to support the school because we are making sacrifices as a school to try to be the best that we can be and to make the students the best that they can be. So the idea is, is that we want everybody involved and we want everybody to sacrifice a little bit and say, you know, maybe we won't go on as big of a vacation because we're gonna give a little bit of money to the school. So it should be an individual decision based upon what that family so that means if you are a very wealthy family with many homes and lots of luxury, then we would see a, a higher responsibility to, to share those gifts um, with the school and, and with the, the community than we would somebody who's just working all the time trying to, to make, make it through the day. Uh, so we don't um, have a set amount. We have some people that have given millions of dollars we have lots of local Canadian families that, that, that have given a million dollars and above. And then we have lots of families who give $20 a month. But that makes us happy because it means that we're doing the right job and the parents are happy and the kids are happy and they want to help us, whether it's $20 a month or you know, a thousand or whatever. So, so there is no set amount. Uh, it really should depend on what the family feels they can afford. And it's also a way of teaching a lesson to your child about the value of giving back and being uh, part of a community and sacrificing. One of the reasons we do international service trips where every student has to go to another country and do volunteer work is because it helps those students, particularly the very wealthy ones, realize I am so lucky. I have everything I need. My parents are doing so much for me so I can go to a school like Appleby. And it makes the students realize, I need to work hard. I need to be the best person that I can be so, so that I can make the world a better place. And, and we try to teach that to our students, but we're also trying to teach that to our families. That's why we, we want to work hard so they, they want to support us and that we will do good things with, with their, their money. Thank you so much. Uh, Pinjinsu 又同时呢也不会让我自己呢觉得太为难所以这个平均数的问题呢我经常可以被问到这样的问题那么刚才首先那个 
。所以大家都首先要明白，捐款是一个发自你内心想要去做的，想要让学校变得更好的一件事情。而不是说我必须要捐，否则我的孩子就在学校里面得不到足够的注意力。所以这一点大家要非常非常的清楚，也就是说，必须是你很舒服的一件事情。当然了，学校呢也会希望我们一些生活条件比较优越的家庭，您可以每年少买一个奢侈品包包，每两年少去一次奢侈的旅游。而把那个钱能够牺牲自己去享受一些奢侈高端的一些产品，来把这个钱省下来，能够帮助你孩子所在的学校变得更好。其实他刚才讲这个的时候，我也是觉得非常感动的，因为我们每个人都需要在我们的这个生活当中去做一些牺牲。如果每个人都能够做一点这样的牺牲，包括经济上，包括时间上，来帮助我们所处的这个学校、孩子所念的学校或者我们所处的社区来变得更好，这个才是我们西方教育一直在提倡的一种，就是呃奉献的传承。那么同时呢，呃 ，Matt 也讲了 ，Apple B 今年开始让国际义工，就是呃。社会实践活动变成了他们课程中的必修部分，而且这一部分的费用也是含在他们的学费里。那么他们所选择的做社会实践的这个义工的地点呢，都是啊、呃、比较贫困的一些国家和地区。啊、呃，首先他们要保证孩子。能够足够的安全，也就我们的学生能够足够的安全，保证带队的老师是足够的专业、足够的有经验。那么这一笔费用呢，就是非常的高。那么他们为什么要带孩子们，就是呃，就是必须去这样的地方呢？是因为他们想教会孩子们要有回馈社会的这个理念，也就是 give it back。呃，我们要让孩子们看到世界上还有那么多国家和地区的学生和孩子，他们正在承受的贫穷、落后带给他们的一些磨难。但是，我们应该对我们能够生活在加拿大这样的国家，能够在 Apple B College 这样的学校求学，是心存感恩的。那么，在这个感恩的过程当中，孩子们能够明白。就是说，我现在所拥有的一切不是理所当然的。这个世界上每个人都是公平的，所以我必须要回馈这个社会，我必须要克制自己，要过奢侈生活，克制自己必须每年都要去豪华的旅游，我必须克制这些欲望，能够把我上天也好，我的父母也好，这个社会也好，命运也好，给我的这些恩赐，能够反馈到这个。呃，我所在的这个社区，我所在的这个学校，让他能够有机会、有能力去帮助更多需要帮助的优秀的学生。所以，希望呃，这个回答能够让所有观看这个视频的家长们都能够得到一些启发。Okay, so can, can I just add some、mm-hmm. some other things? Um, it's it's also important that families know that there are different ways of of making gifts to the school. It doesn't have to be Big gift right at, at a particular time. We can work with the family to to spread out gifts so that maybe a, instead of giving fifty thousand dollars right now, maybe they want to give ten thousand dollars a year for the next five years.、Um, so they, we wanted to work for their financial situation.、Um, so so we can do pledges over different periods of time. We can also direct the gifts to different areas where they feel it will have, where it's the most important to them as a family. So, for example, the teacher that just spoke, Mr. Sakonic, talked about financial aid and how when he was a young boy, his family needed financial aid from Appleby so he could finish. And he was the head student at the school. He's been a very famous teacher. If we didn't give that help almost 40 years ago, maybe he wouldn't have finished. And now today he's here. He's helping. He's an amazing teacher, and he's giving back to the school because we gave something to him. But we could only do that because earlier generations of families gave money towards financial aid. So today we give financial aid to almost 20% of the students at Appleby. So we have 760 students. Out of 130. Of those students are receiving some form of financial aid. It may just be a little bit, maybe a lot. 
but we do that because we want the school to be diverse in many different ways. We want students from different countries for diversity, but we also want students with different interests. So you want students who love the arts or who love sports or who are really good at robotics and coding, um, who do lots of volunteer work, who love singing. So our financial aid can help us find those students who are really good and are gonna help make our music program even better or our soccer team even better. Um, it also allows us to make sure that there's diversity of social economic backgrounds. And that's very important because the, you don't want all the same students and you don't want every student being you know, so rich they can fly anywhere in the world tomorrow you want students to, to have the reality of the world is filled with many different people. And, and when you have a mixture of different students together, they support each other, they learn from each other. Um, so we find that, that having those students on financial aid is really, really important to the school. And it makes it a better experience for the other students. Again, going back to the idea of Harvard, Harvard is great because the best students can go there whether they can it or not. We want the same thing and you want the same thing because if your classmate is not working very hard, it's not a good student, it's not going to make you better. But if that person sitting beside you is like, wow, they're really smart, I have to work even harder yes. to be uh, the, the top or, or to work with them, um, that's what you want. And so the financial aid helps us to do that. And, and that's why that's such an important program. And we also have to realize that all the amazing things about Appleby today, so when you come to the campus and you walk around, you're like, wow, it's beautiful, the buildings are so incredible. Those were all things that other generations, earlier families contributed to, to make us who we are today. And we're always trying to get better. That's why we're building this $36 million new gym. It's a triple gym, it has a thousand seat auditorium, has new workout facilities, new classrooms. It's beautiful, it's amazing, it's going to be one of the most beautiful new buildings in Canada. But we can only do that with the support of our families today, new students that are coming in, past students. So as we get better, it also means the reputation of the school is better. And so for, for the, your children, you get to say, wow, we go to Appleby. Mm -hmm. But that was all built on over a hundred years of yes. other families saying, yes, I'm going to sacrifice and give money back to the school because I want it to get better and better. So we have many ways of working with families. Um, also, that there are good opportunities if they want to have, to have their name recognized at the school, they can have their name on a plaque that says they helped to pay for this building. And for some families, that's really important and they can, or they can put it in the honor of a grandparent or something like that. Other families also want it to be very quiet and they don't want anybody to know. And we do that as well. We have many anonymous donors because the parents don't want you know, the kids to feel pressure because their name is on a building. So we, we can work with the families and do things in a way that will make them feel comfortable. So the gifts can be 100% anonymous and nobody will know, none of the teachers will know, and it won't impact the student. Or if they want a little bit of that recognition, then it can be a little bit more public. So uh, there's different ways. And then the last thing is if the family has Canadian income, everything is tax deductible. So 100% of your gift could come off your Canadian income taxes. Or if you have stocks, Canadian stocks, you can donate them to the school and we will sell them and you get 100% tax credit for those stocks. So. There can also be other benefits to supporting the school beyond just being a good person and, and helpful. That's very informative. Thank you. 好的，那么刚才那个问题呢 ，Matt 就讲了有各种不同的方式可以捐款。你可以就是一笔捐款分期支付。那么同时呢，像我们加拿大本地的家庭呢，你的捐款还可以用来百分之百的去做免税，就是报税的时候申请免税。同时呢，你甚至可以把家庭的一些股票卖给学校，由学校来转卖，同时呢获得这笔捐款。因此，有各种不同的方式来进行捐款。如果你希望能够在捐款的时候把你的名字
家庭的名字，用一个呃公开的方式，或者说适度公开的方式，这也都是可以和学校进行协商。或者你觉得不想有任何对孩子的一些就是可能造成的影响，选择匿名捐款，百分之一百的匿名捐款。这些都可以，所以呢 ，Matt 特别希望大家能够知道，在 Apple Me 七百六十名学生当中，有一百三十名学生在接受学校的助学之助学金的这个帮助，大约占到百分之二十。所以，像哈佛大学也好 ，Apple Me College 这样的学校也好，他们并不是一开始都能够做到这样的，都是很多代的家庭。不同的社会经济背景的家庭，他们把孩子送到这样的学校来，这些孩子都有共同的特征，都是非常的优秀，所以他们要让。很多非常优秀的孩子在同一个环境里，无论他们的家庭贫穷还是富有，都能够在这个学校里学到知识，能够为人类做出更多的贡献。所以，这个才是非营传承，包括让大家去捐赠的一个最重要的一个一个目的。那么，包括像 Apple B 现在正在新建的这个学生中心大楼，它。的整个建造的费用需要三千六百万加币，那么这些钱也都是家庭一点一点的捐出来的。我们每一个到 Apple B 来参观的家庭都说：“哇哦，学校非常漂亮，设备非常好。”这些设备、这些建筑都不是一夜之间或者说一年之间就起来的，而是在过去的一百多年时间里面，很几代人共同努力、共同捐赠的结果。所以呢，也希望我们每一个家庭来 Apple B 上学的家庭，能够牺牲一点你们的呃这个平时的一些享受的一些家庭的娱乐项目，少买一个奢侈品包包，少去一次奢侈旅游，这样你就能把钱省下来，能够给给孩子做一个榜样。我们需要回馈学校，回馈社会。谢谢。Okay, so the next question is um actually I'll I'll do two questions in one. So Ruben said that、um, some schools will invite the families to do a、uh, entrance gift, as if it's a condition to give them an offer, and、uh, so that makes a lot of parents misunderstand.、Um, do wealthy families have, you know,、uh, advantages in getting to the school?、Uh, can I? I want, I want to translate this. Sure. Perfect. 刚才我问的 Matt 这个问题，就是说，呃，有谣言说有一些学校需要家长先把钱捐了，然后才给你录取通知书。这个呢，让大家觉得是不是富有的家庭就会更有先决条件得到学校的一些认可？我想让 Matt 来回答一下这个问题。Sure. So that's a, a great question. So the as a school, we have a lot of integrity to how we operate. And it's very important to us to operate in the best interests of the school, not as a business, as, as I kind of mentioned earlier. So we do not、uh, typically discuss donations at the in the admissions process、uh, because we want the students admitted to the school based upon their merit, so based upon the qualities that they bring, their academic skills, their character, the sports, the arts, the volunteer work that they do. And how they would fit into our community,、um, but we're also assessing the students on what contributions they would make to the school. So, is that student going to make our、uh, volleyball team better? Is that student going to make our computer science program even more interesting and, and competitive? Is that student going to make our、uh, choir sound even more wonderful? So, there are many ways that we look at. Contributions that a student would make to to the school. If a family has significant wealth and, and resources, or have been supportive of their previous school, or those things, it it doesn't hurt to mention that. But it's not going to be a big factor in our admissions decisions. It's a it's just one of many variables that that we look at. But it's by far one of the lower variables because the admissions process is based on the student and the quality of the student.、Um, but we also look at the parents. Do we feel like these are parents who will understand the school, who will be supportive of their children, who will be easy to work with with the teachers? So there are many, many different things that we look at in the admissions process. So that would be one factor, but it's not a significant factor because we. We're not a business. We're a school. We want great students.、Um, so you could say, you know, I'll, I'll make a, a 
million dollar gift to the school, but if the student will not do well, if the student can't speak English well, if they don't want to be here, if they're not a hard worker, you could offer five million dollars and we would say no. So it's, it's really important that the student be the right fit for the school and the quality that there's a, a good match. Um, so, so basically, it does not matter. But it's it's a variable that we will consider after they're admitted, and that's where we would work with the family more, and that's how we prefer to do it. Every school is different, uh, but most of the schools in Canada have the integrity to to follow that same process. But every school is different, so you have to kind of talk to them and see how they how they do it. But that's definitely. That's very helpful. 那么刚才那个问题呢 ，Matt 着重的讲了三点。第一点呢，就是首先每个学校都是不一样的啊。那么有的学校也许会有这样的做法，但是 Apple B 绝对不是，因为 Apple B 有自己的 integrity， 也就是自己的尊严和自己道德的底，就是说道德的一个。准则，那么这个道德准则是什么呢？也就是遵循了刚才我讲的非盈利性，啊、呃，这不是一场生意，在整个录取学生的过程当中，他们看的是学生，这个学生能为学校的校园文化做出什么样的贡献？你是艺术很好，能让我们的艺术课程变得更加丰富多彩，还是说你是一个足球健将，你是一个冰球的好的一个选手？或者说啊，你这个学生有非常棒的其他的一些特点，能够让我们整个学生群体，能够让我们的教学资源变得更加的丰富。所以整个录取过程看的是学生，而不是说你这个家庭能够给学校多少钱。换言之，如果你的学生英语不够好，或者学生有一些日常行为规范的问题，或者说你这个家庭没有真正的理解我们这样的学校是怎么样来做非营传承的，那么如果在这个录取学生的过程当中发现这些基本条件都没有符合，那么无论你有什么样的特长，无论你愿意捐给学校五百万还是一千万，学校依然是不会录取你。这是第一点，第二点，所有的捐款都是要在学生进入学校之后，学校认为你已经有能力被录取了，这个时候呢，才来跟你谈捐款后面的一点点的细节。那么在这里呢 ，Matt 刚刚也讲了，当然，如果各位在进行家长面试的时候，家庭面见的时候，会主动的去跟学校表达你们认可这样的捐款文化，你们也希望将来孩子进入学校之后，你们有这个。奉献的意愿和你们的奉献的能力，这个当然是没有任何坏处的，这个当然是可以，就是去提的。这一点我觉得也是非常的重要。那么第三点呢，就是 Matt 讲的特别的清楚，大家一定要清楚，这不是一场交易。这个呢，主要的还是在录取的过程当中看学生的素质。就像刚才讲了，无论你贫穷富贵，只要你是优秀的。愿意去挑战自己，成为一个最好的学生，整个家庭愿意去和学校做配合，并且有相应的意识和能力的，这个才是他们要的学生，而不是你这个家庭能够一次性的给学校多少钱。非常希望大家能够仔细的去去去去体会 Matt 刚才这个回答，并且呢，能够帮助你们在顶读优思的申请路上能够得到最好的成长。谢谢大家。Thank you very much, Matt. It's a wonderful, wonderful interview, and、uh, I also learned a lot. And I think、um, in the future, I do wish one day all the you know immigrant Chinese families can have the、um, chance to visit the grand, biggest, beautiful building Appleby College is constructing, and we can have a face-to-face -face seminar there. Thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you, Maggie. It、okay. always has been. I've worked with Maggie for many years, and I have great trust in her.、Uh, listen to her; she knows what she's talking about,、uh, and, and works with many great schools. And、uh, we're very lucky to, to have that partnership. So, thank you for your amazing translating, and for this opportunity to, to speak with your families today. Thank you. 刚才 Matt 也说了，他因为跟我工作了很多年了，也对我有非常的信任。呃，信任，尤其是信任我翻译的这个能力。那么我刚才跟他讲了，希望不久的将来，也就是明年，我的所有 MYE 的家长朋友们能够有机会到 Apple B 新建的最大的这个学生中心的这个大礼堂，千人大礼堂来举行一次面对面的和。
呃学校的招生官和校长关于如何能够帮助大家进入 FOB College 这样的学校有一次面对面的见面会。非常感谢大家收看这个视频，谢谢大家。谢谢。大家好，我是加拿大独立升学顾问 Maggie 老师。今天呢，我来到了非常非常著名的加拿大独立顶尖混合私校，叫 Appleby College。我非常荣幸的邀请到了，嗯、呃，在 Appleby 任教三十年的老师，呃 ，Mr. Dave Sakonic。So, Mr. Sakonic, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Yes,、uh, I've been teaching here at Appleby for thirty years. I teach economics and business. And I was a student here for nine years、uh, prior to be,、uh, becoming a teacher here at Appleby. And I also coach basketball, soccer, rugby, all sorts wow, of other things. So pretty,、amazing. pretty busy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sakonic, he is at Appleby for thirty years. In thirty years, he was a student at Appleby College. He was a student here for nine years. 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 问题，然后呢，请大家来看一看，在 FB 时间那么久的一位老师，他是怎么样来解答关于顶读优思的家庭们一些就是比较困惑的问题。So, Mr. Conic,、um, many Asian Chinese families, uh, they wonder what they should do after their children get into a top private school like FB, because back in China. Uh, there's no such type of school like Appleby. It's completely nonprofit. So、uh, the the parents really want to know how can they support their children once they get into the school. The for me the best way to support their children while they're here at Appleby is simply to immerse themselves in our culture. So get involved in a lot of opportunities that avail themselves throughout the school. Uh, whether it's working with the parents' association, whether it's volunteering at various events, it's just finding out what the school is all about. But more importantly, it's also talking to their own kids about what they like about the school and how,、uh, as a parent, they can best support their own children. And that's one of the bigger things that I, I find that、uh, in, in recent years we're seeing more and more parental involvement in the school, and I think that's a very healthy thing for our school. Then we get to understand other cultures as they be immerse themselves in our culture. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Mr. Sakonic 刚刚分享了特别好的观点。从他的经历上来讲呢，非常的希望所有进入到 Apple B College 的新生，以及包括新生的家长，能够。尽自己最大的努力来融入到 Apple B 的校园生活当中。那么这样的融入呢，不光是指在课堂上的融入，更多的是指在课外，包括家委会，包括家长的义工活动，包括学生的呃周末也好，课后也好，尽可能的多参加除了课堂之外的各种活动，来融入到 Apple B 的校园生活当中去。啊，并且呢，他也非常的鼓励家长们可以多跟孩子聊一聊。进入学校以后，他们最喜欢的是校园生活的哪一部分？他们觉得学校里的哪些和自己的背景不同的一些学生的活动，让他们感觉最受益？啊 ，Mr. Conic 也讲了，就是他也非常的希望，呃，来自中国的。呃，学生不管是移民家庭还是国际生家庭，都可以在这方面做出最大的努力，因为学校也非常的希望去了解这些不同的呃民族背景，包括甚至不同的地域背景的学生，他们也希望能够帮助这些来自不同背景的学生，能够和谐的在这个校园里生活和学习。Thank you so much. And in terms of、um, you know academic life. And also extracurricular life. Do you have some specific advice? Oh yes.、Uh, as far as academic life is, the most important thing is to make sure that the students or parents help their students be very organized. In a school like Appleby, we really start at seven thirty. We finish at six o'clock. It's longer than most people work during the day. So it's to support them and, and, and be there for their kids because they are long days. They're multiple subjects. There's also the extracurricular activities, and the, their best, biggest, and most important role is to support their children while they're here, more than anything else. Without a doubt. 
片。所以 ，Mr. Sconic 讲了，就是如果您的孩子进入了像 Apple B 这样的学校，他的学业是会非常繁重的。他基本上每天都要从早到晚，有很多的课程，很多的课后课程要去完成。所以，他觉得最重要的一点建议，就是要教给孩子怎么样管理自己的课程时间的技能，在这方面要去。支持你的孩子怎么样把自己的各项的课业、各项的活动都能够安排组织的井井有条，也就是我们经常讲的时间管理能力，这一点是非常非常的重要。Thank you so much. And、uh, my last question is、um, because Appleby College is a non-profit school, so from the perspective of a teacher, how do you expect the families to、um, contribute? To the school, both financially and also,、um, you know,、um, uh, in terms of、uh, you know volunteering and、mm -hmm. types like that. I'll start with the second question.、Uh, volunteering opportunities are monthly here at Appleby, and groups of students have their parents who are always involved in these opportunities. So I would, I, there,、uh, uh, messages go out on a regular basis for volunteers. So new parents and parents of, of our foreign students, they should all get involved as quickly as possible, just to to meet other parents and, and feel good about the school. Secondly, on the financial side,、uh, when I was a student here in my in my final year,、uh, my father was hospitalized, and、uh, he we couldn't pay our final installment for tuition. So through the generous support of bursary assistance, the school was able to provide us with the. Eighteen hundred dollars to pay for my final semester here at Appleby,、mm -hmm. and subsequent to that, I've always contributed to what are, what's called our Appleby Fund. My three children who have gone here also contribute on an annual basis. So, philanthropy for bursary and scholarship is so important because it brings in the best and the brightest, and that's something that, as teachers, we love to teach them. And with those opportunities,、uh, we have we truly have a great student body because of philanthropy. Wow, that's very very sweet. Ah,、mm -hmm. uh, so he 刚才 Mr. Sconic 也分享了他在作为一个 Apple B 的学生，也就三十年前，他是 Apple B 的一个学生。那么那时候呢，他在 Apple B 的最后一年，也就是十二年级，他的父亲呢不幸住院，所以呢，因为父亲突然病倒，他们的家庭没有办法支付最后的一笔学费。当时呢 ，Apple B College 呢就给了他一千八百加币的这个助学金，帮他们家庭。解决了这个困难，所以呢，他刚刚一直在讲，他在 Apple B 任教的三十年间，一直对学校当初的这个帮助心存感恩，所以他也非常非常的希望大家能够理解，像 Apple B 这样的这个顶级的私校，他们的非盈利性是。体现在在任何一个学生遇到困难的时候，他们都会用学校的各种资源去帮助他们。所以，为了能够帮助这些出现困难的优秀的学生，就需要每一个 Apple B College 的家庭都能够尽自己的所能来帮助学校，无论是从基础教学设备的建设，还是说来帮助学校储备足够的助学金。每户家庭都能够尽自己所能做出贡献。那么同时呢，这个 Miss Conic 也讲了，这个作为一个非盈利性的学校，每个家庭的对学校的贡献是非常非常重要的。没有说一定要每个家庭都奉献很多很多的力量，但是呢，大家众人拾柴火焰高。Thank you so much, Mr. Conic. It's my pleasure. My pleasure、yes. too.、Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.